The other day, I shared a tweet that my friend Shannon sent out, announcing that we were going to be co-hosting a popular atheist call-in show together. In response to this, somebody named Dennis, a self-described Christian apologist and debater, sent me this tweet, asking me to buy his book for just 99 cents because it proves God and disproves evolution. Now naturally, I told him that I'd rather spend my money elsewhere, but I did invite him to call into the show. You know, the show whose announcement he was currently commenting on. Unfortunately, Dennis declined. A self-described Christian apologist and debater... Debate? Nope. Yeah, so much for that. Clearly thinking that money was the issue, and not the fact that he had just asked a complete stranger to drop everything, read his book, and answer his challenges, Dennis attempted to send me a copy of his book. But even if I was interested in reading it, the link that he sent was the ugliest thing I'd ever seen in my life, and I didn't feel like getting any malware that day, so I decided to ignore it. Now you may be asking yourself, why am I making a whole video about somebody that I decided to ignore? Well, it's because not even a day had gone by before Dennis made a YouTube video and tweeted it at me several times, demanding that I watch it and defend my atheism with a thread. And just as I was about to fire off a tweet explaining how nobody owes you their time or attention, Dennis, I decided to check the video out to see if it was even worth watching. And let me tell you, it wasn't. Now I'm not going to play clips in the original video like I usually do because the entire video is just black text on a white screen with a giant free software banner across the middle, as are all of the videos on Dennis's channel. And yes, you are reading that right, the titles of those two videos are Defending Israel's Ethnic Cleansing and Muhammad Killed Babies So Why Can't Israel. I'm not even gonna touch those, dude. <laughs> now, the actual argument that Dennis brings to the table is that the Bible contains knowledge that humans couldn't have possibly known at the time that the Bible was written. And he starts his video by saying that this is the strongest argument to prove that God exists. And I want you to keep that in mind going forward. Everything that Dennis is about to say, by his own admission, is the strongest argument he has. He is bringing his A-plus game here. Dennis's first example of the Bible's so-called advanced knowledge is the law of nature. He says that before science discovered that there is a thing called the law of nature, the Bible already told us about it. Now, I think it's important to point out that there is no single defined law of nature in science. Law of nature is just a colloquial term for the general order of the universe, or things that are perceived to be inevitable. So I'm pretty sure that what Dennis means by that is like the laws of physics or something, but the way that he's phrasing this is just super weird right off the bat. And Dennis confirms my assumption by talking about ordinances in heaven and earth, and sharing a Bible passage as a reference. So his argument here is that there are apparent laws of nature, and the Bible says that there are laws of nature, and the only possible explanation for people having written that in the Bible is that God told them to. There's just no way that humans could have possibly figured out on their own that there is some sort of order to the universe without either divine revelation or modern science. And what Dennis is clearly missing here is that humans have been able to recognize patterns for a long time. We have star charts written in cuneiform from centuries before the Bible was put together. There are several civilizations that had never heard of Christianity, that existed thousands of years before Christianity, that built whole monuments around solstices and equinoxes and seasons and other regularly occurring natural phenomena. We even have cave paintings from 20,000 years ago that correlate to constellations in the night sky. So the assertion that humans just had no idea that there was any order to the universe before that line was written in the Bible is completely absurd, and it only shows that Dennis has never taken the time to learn anything about the history of science or human civilization. Dennis's next point is that the sun moves in a circuit, and again, he throws out a Bible passage, which you can't even freaking read because it's behind the ad banner of the free video software that he's using. And then he says that science has discovered that the sun does move in a circuit, just like the Bible predicts, and therefore the Bible knew about this before science did. But the Earth moves in a circuit around the sun, which causes visible patterns in the way that the sun appears in the sky. Which is obvious to us today, but it wasn't obvious to the people who wrote the Bible. 
that passage meant something completely different to the people who wrote it and to the countless generations of people over several centuries who believed that the Earth was the center of the universe and the sun and the planets and all the stars all orbited around us. You know, like that one super powerful church that believed in the Bible and declared the concept of the Earth going around the sun to be heresy and threatened to torture scientists like Galileo to death for teaching it. By the way, the Vatican did eventually admit that they were wrong about that one. In 1992. Finally, Dennis points to this passage, which mentions the circle of the Earth, which he says refers to the circumference of the Earth or the indication that the Earth is round, something that he calls modern knowledge. But again, this is nonsense. First of all, Dennis neglects to mention the parts of the Bible that say that the Earth has four corners, or that the Earth has edges, or that you can see the whole Earth from the top of a tall mountain. And before anybody argues that I'm not interpreting those passages correctly, remember that people have been using those passages to validate their belief that the Earth is flat and stationary for millennia. There are flat earthers today that cite those passages as proof of their beliefs. So just because Dennis is citing other equally vague passages that happen to fit a little bit better with reality does not make his claims any more credible. Also, once again, Dennis is completely wrong about the history of scientific knowledge. Humans have known that the Earth was a sphere at least as far back as 500 BCE. Eratosthenes calculated the circumference of the entire globe within 1% of its actual value around 240 BCE. We've known about the shape and the size of the Earth for over 2,000 years, so it is completely ridiculous for Dennis to claim that the Earth being round would have been news to anybody when the Bible was written. And that's it. That's the whole video. That's all the proof that Dennis brought to the table. This scientific knowledge in the Bible validates the reality that God exists because foreknowledge cannot be natural. It proves God. And I'd like to take this opportunity to remind you that Dennis started this video by saying that this is his best argument. The best that this non-debating debater has to offer is that the Bible contains references to things that people already knew about for thousands of years before the Bible was written. Call me crazy, but I'm just not convinced. Unfortunately, this line of not thinking is pretty common amongst apologists. In order to back up the assertion that we couldn't have possibly known about morality or happiness, or in this case, science, without the Bible, they pick a few passages that sorta kinda sound a little bit like our modern knowledge today, and they ignore all of the people who figured this stuff out just fine before or without the Bible, or the countless other passages in the Bible that are very obviously scientifically inaccurate. Like in Genesis, where it says that there was a global flood, or in Jonah, where it says a man lived inside the stomach of a fish for three days, or in Leviticus, where it says that insects have four legs. Like all they had to do was count and they could have avoided that one. Overall, this video and Dennis's insistence that it is undeniable proof of God is a great example of someone being so far behind that they think they're actually in first place. If Dennis had spent half the amount of time that it took him to make this video just thinking about what he was actually saying here, then perhaps he too would find the persistence of this kind of rhetoric to be as surprising as it is disappointing. And as far as the science teacher challenge level is concerned, in the past I've given people one point for for at least using words to articulate their insanity, but Dennis refused to even do that. So I'm giving this video a pooping garden gnome out of 10. You thought you had something interesting and unique, but really it's just cringy and unpleasant and nobody wanted to see it. And with that, I'm Forrest Valkai. Thank you so much for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, and all the other stuff you do here on YouTube. While you're here on my channel, go watch my science road trip video. I wanted to try something a little bit different, and I'm actually really happy with how it turned out. So go check it out and tell me what you think. Have an awesome rest of your day, and never stop learning. Bye-bye.